While we understand that transportation details have not been yet worked out, a proposed van shuttle twice a day at 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. will not allow people to get to their labor ready or other places for work or to eat in the evening. It also means that someone with a 1.30 meeting downtown would have to spend the whole day waiting for a ride for one simple appointment. There is also issues of someone missing the shuttle for various reasons that would mean either missed appointments or a night alone downtown without sleeping gear. Furthermore, we know we cannot move with the mere promise that transportation will be worked out on Monday morning, not knowing what those solutions might be. Secondarily, while the offer of a porta potty and access to fire is a huge improvement, we still need access to water, electricity, and showers. Being isolated will make it much harder for those supporting the camp to regularly stop by and make sure the water supply is adequate, and we would like to have a reliable source of water for us to obtain the water ourselves. Uh, a shower at the truck stop will cost $9 plus a $5 deposit. In order to get a shower, a person would need to spend the whole day downtown. We believe that there is a much better solution at Lake Farm Park, where the bus is only three quarters of a mile walk and is on a bike path and closer to services and work options for people. Additionally, while we can limit our access to the Lessier Heritage Center, we would be able to get water on a regular basis. Monthly, low-income bus passes for people would be much less expensive than staffing, gas, and a shuttle that is fairly inflexible. We also feel the need to respond to several other issues raised in your letter dated November 16, 2012. In solidarity with Occupy members who have been banned from the parks, we respectfully request that if Lake Farm Park is approved, that people who were only banned for the camping season, which is now over, be allowed to remain with the group since that ban is no longer in effect. There were some issues that were not answered as well. Would we have access to electricity? What would happen if there was an emergency or a blizzard and we were stranded in this fairly remote location and you did not answer our request for local Madison bus passes? Please understand that there are no private properties in the county of Madison properly zoned to continue an encampment. We need a property zone conservancy with a property owner willing to apply for a camping permit. The only properties in the city that meet those, dis those descriptions are owned by the city, county, and university or state, or are a private golf course. There is no legal place to go. Finally, we would like to thank the human service staff who have taken the time to meet with several people on a one-on-one -on -one and understand their situations. As you have, as you have discovered, there is, one size, there is no one-size-fits-all solution, and for many, there are not viable options immediately. Without a guarantee that people will not be back out on the streets this winter, the group is not willing to take temporary solutions that may result in forcing another encampment in a month. Furthermore, after further investigation, the Dane County and City of Madison Police Health Department has found both live and dead bed bugs in the men's shelter one and two, and given this situation, we do not believe that shelter space is available. While we appreciate that you have finally opened up communication channels, this was a very short time, timeline to discuss the matter and prepare a response. We believe there is a way to ambitiously work this out for the short term if communication continues in a respectful manner. We would like to invite you to our daily camp meeting on Monday at 530.